Hello, I'm Caroline Granger. I'm Jay Unger. I'm Emma Kerwin. I'm Lily Marchese, and these are the latest headlines from the Yorkshire Voice newsroom on Friday the 24th of July. An investigation is underway after the body of a man was pulled from the river air in Leeds city centre this morning. West Yorkshire police say an explosion at a flat in Leeds last night, which led to the evacuation of... Two former pupils of murdered teacher Anne Maguire have cycled nearly 400 miles to raise money for a charity. 30 seconds to an air. Call to camera three, with the exception of the T's on page seven, which you'll be doing to camera two. On air in ten. Nine. Stand by. Eight, seven, stand by with titles. Six, stand by full five, sound. Four, three, two, one. And we're on. So stand by with high cams, stand by with grams. Grams. High cam. Camera three and cue. Hello and welcome to Yorkshire Boys with me, Emma Kerwin, on Thursday the 30th of July. Here are today's top stories. Take it. Cue. And in the pictures, is the death of an 11 year old boy. Here's how he died while helping out on a farm in East Ardley. Cue on. As the summer holidays get underway, how do you keep your children safe when they're out playing or when they're safe in the net? Five. Hold four, it. Three. And cue on. And we'll be meeting the three Full year old girl from Pugsy who's planning to walk 500 miles to help fight the illness which led to the death of her grandfather. Full sound. Eight on Coming back to camera three, fade the music. At words, good man he was. Three, two. And back to one. camera three. Play the music. But first, an inquest has been hearing details about the death of an 11 year old boy who was killed after being hit by a tractor at a children's farm attraction. Harry Whitlam from East Ardsley died at Swithin's farm in Rothwell two years ago. He was helping out at the farm where his mum worked in the coffee shop. Hayley Longster reports. The inquest into the death of an 11 year old boy who was killed when he was hit by a tractor no has reopened today. <coughs> It's happened. Interesting. Apologise for the technical difficulties when we come back to you, Emma. Back to camera three. Sorry about that. Apologies for the technical difficulties. And read on. A new campaign has been launched by West Yorkshire Police urging parents to keep children safe during the summer holidays. The scheme, called Get Safe Online, warns about the dangers and potential risks to children safe in the net. Unsupervised. Parents are being advised to keep an eye on their children's activity and there have also been calls for parents to be alert for so-called stranger danger when their youngsters are playing out. Well, earlier today I chatted to 11-year-olds Finn and Harvey who have been taking part in our reconstructions to ask how clued up they are about keeping themselves safe. Full sound. Finn, what have your One forty on this package. Um, I don't know if we can go back to the inquest. Well, we haven't got time to go back to the well, inquest, have we? They've said that you're not to go off of anyone that you don't <coughs> know of, and that you always need to tell your parents if you're going off anywhere. And what about you? Were we doing anything that would have interfered with that? Well, my mum always we says when I'm playing on my PS4 my mm. games, never chat with someone who you don't know, or like an adult or someone. You always need, like, once, um, okay, so out of this, uh, we come to, to camera two for the T's on church, to, full well, sound on church, to, like, and then into and Arctic. I don't. During Arctic, can we get the guest into the uh, interview position, please? Or something. But yep. we do know this body, 
and he was approached by a car. It was about a two. two months ago. And he was approached on by a car, and the man in the car told him to come into the car with him. And then the boy refused, and then went off and told his mum. And the police got package. involved. And what do you think about um, having like a password? For when your 15. parents come pick you up, have you heard anything about that? That word, you're yeah, welcome. Ten, doing that. nine, and eight, camera seven, two, six, a good thing. five, yeah. four. Well, thank three, you both for joining me and having a chat. Thank you. Camera two. <coughs> Still to come on the programme will Take be it. reporting from a church in Farsley. Coming to full sound. Grant to restore its stained glass windows, one of which can Low almost sound certainly on this, be regarded so keep it boosted. as unique in the world. All will be revealed shortly. Hang on. And he's got an Australian so All will be revealed shortly at the end of this. Four, then three, turn to camera three. Two, one. Camera two. All will be revealed shortly. Camera three. <coughs> With an intrepid Cookridge father in Norway for the chat. Yeah. On a 500 mile tandem bike ride, Duncan Good Brownnut chat. is tackling the challenge to raise money for the Fatten Disease Family okay. Association. His children were both diagnosed with the and disease just before Christmas in 2013, and his six-year-old daughter died in May, and his five-year-old son's condition is worsening. We spoke to him via Skype. Take it. I'm sitting uh, in a place called Storen, which is in the middle of Norway, and we're planning to cycle <coughs> uh, from Borus over five days to the Arctic Circle Centre. When, when Ellie May and Caleb were diagnosed, uh, with late infantile batting disease, we were told uh, that they so out of this, linking to uh, Isla uh, on camera three, May, this and we'll be extending May. the interview, uh, Emma. Six years old. Okay, uh, now five, <coughs> and he's, yes, uh, he's lost his mobility. Thank you very much. Uh, he's, he's losing his less than a minute on the package, um, and we really don't know uh, how much longer, no. how much time we have left with him. So, um, uh, so I've done a number Stephen of challenges to try and raise money for the Stephen Family Stephen Association. Yeah. Uh, running, I did a, a month of five mile runs every day, um, and a couple of different cycling challenges. So this is this is by far the hardest, the not just because of the distance or or because of the, the terrain, but just to make it that little bit harder. We also decided to do it on a tandem bike. I've got 20 remaining. Rod at the front steering, and then. Me at the back pedaling for 500 miles. Don't mind coming back um, to camera three. Norway so far seems to be a, a, a beautiful country. At worst, uh, four days' weather. time. You can see behind me it looks Ten, uh, blue skies nine, and sunny. Uh, it was eight, pouring down this morning seven, uh, and it was very six, windy on the road on five, the way here. Uh, four, but we we'll still plan to be in two, the Arctic Circle in one, four days' time. Seven. Camera three. Now, staying with charity fundraising, and 500 miles <coughs> seems a long way to cycle, but especially so if you're walking particularly with little legs. However, that doesn't seem to put off three-year-old Isla Grundy, as our reporter, Jay Unger, found out. Full sound. Isla was only a one-year-old when her grandfather, David, was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. He died in June this year. And even though she's only three, Isla's parents say she's determined to try and help fight the disease that killed her granddad. And now she plans to walk 500 miles to raise funds for the Motor Neuron Disease Association. Her father Stand Richard the says the project is important for the entire family. Yeah, uh, camera three, give me a two shot, will you please? Two minutes remaining on the pack on the package. A bit wider, just a wee bit. Okay, so Emma, the link to camera two on this one. The feeling is a little bit like uh, you expect hospital to be a safe place, expect doctors, we worship doctors though, we do obviously. But lots of different diseases to look at, it's difficult for them, I know, but makes you feel like you don't have faith in them fully, because what are they going to do? They're gonna 130 on the package. So Tackling 10 miles each week, often persuaded by the bribe of ice cream, her parents say it's important, as she gets older, to remember her time with her granddad, David, in a positive Stand way. The next caption. It loved spending time with her, and it was, it was always playing with her, and 
you know, oh, time cuddling with her and sitting with her and oh. you know, as soon as they come in they'd be sat on the floor no. doing something, yeah. reading books okay. or playing and it's just so, it's that, uh, so thanks for pleased to know that, that's where the video of Emmerdale comes in. Cousin, um, and we'll so keep we it until joining me, Stephen Wood, and we'll take that yeah, on through. Come to camera two. Come to camera two for this one. Photos and cards that we've got. <coughs> and she'll, she'll always know him. She'll grow up knowing him. We'll tell her about him and how nice he was. So, Emma, at the end of this, what a remarkable little girl. They just they just loved each other. They just and they just had fun. They just played with each other. It was, just, on the it was just lovely to see granddad and granddaughter. It was just a lovely fun, fun little bond that they had. For the time being, she may not be able to appreciate exactly why she's raising Going the back to in memory of a grandfather, but she certainly understands the huge challenge ahead. Remaining and she has a simple message for those prepared to support her in that challenge. Ten remaining. Nine, eight, seven, six, Hold it. five, and mix to camera two. Three. Thank you. What a remarkable little girl. Well done. Keep on. So fans may be pleased to know that Emmerdale Bottoms okay. are planning to launch a tour of the famous village set located at Howard near Leeds this summer. However, it's not that straightforward because today Leeds City Council only provisionally approved the plans which are being Coming opposed back to by ramblers three. over issues with footpaths. Joining camera me three. is Stephen Wood, who is part of the Ramblers Association in Weatherby. Camera Thank one. you for joining me today, Stephen. Um, so, first of all, you must Two be minutes quite on the pleased in hearing the news that the plans have you know, taken into consideration what you've been concerned about. Mm. Yes, the original application was for, one. Um, yep. for people to be transferred from the house to the set by minibuses across the grounds. Camera and two. there were going to be two minibuses three. in tandem, uh, six trips an hour at the weekend when the site was at its busiest. One. And I considered, and other people objected, that this would cause a problem on the footpaths and the bridleways. These minibuses would be crossing the paths and using the bridleways. Number one. Uh, and so we objected on those grounds. Other people objected, the Open Spaces Society objected, and I think local residents objected. So is he happy with this I, decision? I'm pleased that the application was then amended, Jolly so good. that instead of transferring Camera two. customers one from remaining. the house to the site, people will now go either down one. to the site or will uh, go down to the house. Is this good news for people at Howard? So is this good news then for people at so Howard? Camera from one. the point of view of the Ramblers who objected on the grounds of the um, potential obstructions Camera and dangers one. within the grounds on the public rights of way, it's good news. Camera three. I can't speak for the people who objected on other grounds. But will uh, he be going I, on this I tour? No, once the changes are made. And will you be going on it at all? Going on tours? I'm going to. Camera one. Emmerdale. Emmerdale. Uh, it's a number of years since I watched Emmerdale, but. Uh, Camera three. Uh, I doubt it. But um, I think also. Camera one. Bear in mind that the, 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 the set of Emmerdale will have to be <laughs> changed two. to accommodate 20 these seconds visitors. Remaining. Number one. Normally has not accommodated visitors, and that again is extra planning. They've been the facilities, and that was a, another reason why Ten seconds some people remaining. objected. Nine, eight, only eight, seven, seven, eight, seven, eight, 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 it's said that God works in mysterious ways, which is true for a church in Farsley, which has a stained glass window picturing Jesus wearing an Australian shepherd's hat. We sent Mike Bowman down to find out more. Thank you. Full set. From the outside, well done, Emma. The, day, the picturesque St John's <coughs> Church in Farsley looks in little need of attention, but on the inside, it is a different matter altogether. Stand by for the first caption. Over the last few caption. years, we discovered that some of the windows were starting Plenty of time to sag. Up. They're stained glass windows that are joined together with lead, which is quite a soft metal. Uh, and and over time, we on time? the glass pulls the window no, down so it's sag in the, in the heat. After a long and often frustrating yeah. process, yeah, the church received a £56,000 grant from the Heritage Ministry Fund earlier this year. And our work has begun to repair the stained glass, which also plays an important role in reflecting the history the of St John's. Cut the goodbye short, but we're off time. It's not too good. Good for time. Samuel Martin was born in Farsley, 
<coughs> you won't have time to read all the goodbyes, so. He became a, a vicar. <laughs> 45 remaining on the package. And took uh, merino sheep with him, which are perfectly white. They have no black wool in them. The Australians took up the merino sheep with great gusto because they could use them for, uh, with, with no black wool in them. And so he's quite Twins celebrated on the package. in Australia in taking the wool across. So we'll be counting to shut so up. Have a window. 15 on the package. Uh, where's Yorkshire boys? Yeah, camera three. And he's got 10 on the package. 9, 8, on. 7, I've never seen 6, a 5, uh, 4, as a 3, Australian 2, before. 1. Mike Berriman reporting for Yorkshire Voice. Camera three. Ten on the goodbye. That's it Nine, for the moment, but eight, join us again tomorrow. Seven, Stand by with Grams. Six, at quarter to five, five for a round up four, of all the day's news. Three, Grams. Thank two, you for joining us and one. goodbye. Hi Cam. And Ten to off air. Nine, eight, seven. Stand by to fade the music. Six, five, four, three. And fade the music. Two, one. Go to black. Zero. And we're off. Good. Yay. Well done. Thank you very much. Good one.